गुड मॉर्निंग दिस इज आवर सैटरडे मॉर्निंग योगा थेरेपी क्लास थ्रो सटिक स्पेस योगा एंड हीलिंग स्टूडियो वेर आई बीन टीचिंग इन पर्सन नाउ वी आर ऑल इन फेसबुक लाइव टू डेस्ट टॉपिक इज अ रिक्वेस्ट आई गेट अ लॉट ऑफ रिक्वेस्ट फॉर टीचिंग ए क्लास ऑन आयुर्वेदिक योगा थेरेपी लास्ट वीक एंड आई हैड ए टीचिंग for the yoga teachers training and it was a whole day 8 hours 9 to 5 it was on uh, introduction to ayurved ayurved is a traditional system of healing from india and it is being continuously being practiced for last 5000 years government of india is being looking into all the traditional system of healing and they have picked up a five traditional system of healing and they made a separate ministry and the name of the ministry is called ministry of ayush a y u s h and ayush is a acronym for ayurved yoga unani siddha and homeopathy ayurved is very much misinterpreted in west even in india as a product oriented herbal oriented a traditional system of healing it is completely opposite ayurveda the word itself the meaning of ayurved ayush ayu means longevity and veda means knowledge it's a knowledge which gives us our longevity it's a philosophy philosophy means it is beyond science as you say when science stops philosophy begins science is that you ask a question you get an answer philosophy is i ask a question you get a more question you get a more question a practice of a traditional system of healing causes a transformation in your body and mind we call it from rogi people with disease to nirogi people with no disease healthy to yogi and yogini it's basically a transformation from this is what you call dis space es this is to an effortless is and i'm going to show you in the practice how you transform yourself to a effortless is in ayurvedic philosophy the first concept is we are part of this universe a balance between this universe and my body is in health universe is called macrocosm and my body is called microcosm in sanskrit is called jatha pindo tatha brahmando pindo means my body microcosm brahmando is the universe the basic philosophy is that ayurved 50% is a daily routine called dinacharya maybe another 40% is your controlling your mind body and maybe about 10% is the herbal products 
which we use. And also these herbal products do not have a direct effect in our body and mind. It acts through some Ayurvedic philosophy. Like it acts through prana or life force, acts through our agni or digestive fire. It acts through cleaning our nadi, nadi shodhana. It acts through building our ojas, our immunity, called ojas thapana. So the concept here is the whole universe is made of five elements. In contrast to the Big Bang Theory, first there was a space called Akash. Space, it came the air called Bayu. Air had a friction, created a fire called your Agni. Fire melted the cloud from water. So water, so jal, and it froze into earth, the hard element, Prithibi. Space, air, fire, water, earth. Akash, Bayu, Agni, Jal, Prithibi. And Sanskrit also called Khiti, Ap, Tej, Marud, Bom. I have some a Bengali yoga teachers who are also following me. I will want to one, one Bengali word for them. Akash. Debe Udarota Bayu Debe Choncholota Ogni Debe Ushnota Jol Debe Shitolota Prithibi Debe Stirota. So five elements are also in our body and mind. Yoga practice is called the art of self-healing. And this philosophical concept means we have the five elements in our body. Physically, you can say we have five elements in our body, but also these elements have an attributes called gunas. And based on the attributes, we have a functional body type. We call psycho physical body type. In Ayurveda, it is called doshas. And the main concept of Ayurveda is called law of opposite. The attributes we have in our body based on our functional energy body type, it's hurting us to balance, to create a health, and to treat a disease, we have to do a law of opposite. Can I explain to you a little bit more before you start practicing? And it's very important. Once you understand that the law of opposite, you'll be always able to do a practice in Ayurveda, and primarily in the yoga therapy. Why? Because yoga is a, is a philosophy. It's called Yoga Sutra of Patanjali. It's a practice called Patanjali Ashtang Yoga, eight limbs of yoga. Yam, Niyam, Asan, Pranayam, Pratahar, Dharan, Dhan, Samadhi. Eight limbs. Able to use the adaptation of these practices is yoga therapy. Yoga therapy means I have a person who comes with musculoskeletal disorder, like say chronic back pain, knee pain, hip pain. I will have a, a, a different set of yoga therapy that is based on Ayurveda. Why? You will see very soon that musculoskeletal disorders, neuropsychiatric disorder belongs to a one kind of body type called Vata. So you have to learn how to balance the 
what are attributes. So on that context, the old yoga therapy basically is Ayurvedic yoga therapy. So as I said, all the five elements are in, in my body, in our body. So physically you can say space, I have a space in my lungs, space in my stomach, space in my colon. Air is a movement, movement of my intestine, movement of my heart. Fire is the contagious, my digestive fire. It's called Agni. Fire also lets me see my vision. Water, the majority part of my body is a water. Also water holds the tissues together. Like a dough, if you put a water on a flower, it gets together. And earth is your grounding elements, like the musculoskeleton, your teeth. People have a different proportion of these five elements. These are called Pancha Mahabhuta, five elements. People who have a primary element of space and air, primarily air, they're called Vata. And they have a attributes of air. And we'll talk about the attributes. I'm going to take a little time for the explaining because a lot of people wanted me to explain Ayurvedic yoga therapy before we practice. When the primary element is a fire, it's called Pitta. And they will have attributes of fire. And when the primary element is in water and earth, they're called Kapha basically grounding, and they will have attributes of water and earth. And these are called a functional body type, and it's being seen very easily in our day-to-day -day activity. See our body, our body is made of energy responding to our five senses. It's like theory of relativity, E equal to mc squared. Energy is a mass times velocity squared. Mass is my body. My velocity is the information I receive through my five senses. I hear, I see, I smell, I sense, and I touch. That energy, if you look at from Western perspective, the energy comes from aerobic glycolysis. The end product of metabolism is glucose. Glucose combines with oxygen, forms carbon dioxide, water, and ATP, adenosine triphosphate, which is an energy. Carbon dioxide comes out through your lung, water goes out through your kidney, and we're in a balanced situation. This energy is also with three types. When it is a catabolic energy, when energy is breaking down, catabolic energy is vata. And their body type looks like they're called ectomorphic. You'll see a person very thin, and they never gain weight when they eat ectomorphic. They're also primarily from ectodermal tissue, and they get a disease from your ectodermal tissue, neuropsychiatric disorder, musculoskeletal disorders. When the primary energy is a metabolic, maintaining, it's a pitta, They're like a mesomorphic. They're also from, from origin from mesoderm. And these are all connected. You can see how easily they connect. When the energy is anabolic, it's a kapha, it's endomorphic from the endoderm. And the whole philosophy of Ayurveda is called epigenetics. Genetics is not our death sentence. My father has diabetes, my father has hypertension, I am going to have a diabetes, I am going to have hypertension, possibly not because that gene has to express. 
and expression of gene is through your epigenetics. So let's look at our practice, what kind of practice we're going to do. So first, look at the attributes called gunas. Ayurveda describes a 20 gunas that describe as a paired gunas, hot, cold, subtle, gross. So you have a subtle, you know, people who are subtle, we call it a slick willy, subtle. Slow, people are very slow. You can see people are slow. Slow in the moving, slow in the thinking. Soft, so oh, look at this baby, so soft, beautiful baby. Babies are in kapha. Middle age is your pitta. Or senior age, the mature age is a butter. So call it a, like the gunas, like, you know, once you start understanding the gunas, you can feel within yourself. Static, sharp, sharp, with a sharp mind, sharp nose, look at his nose, very sharp nose. Body, mind, attributes, qualities. Slimy, sticky, slimy is a drooling all the time, you know, <clears throat> is a, a stool, is slimy. We call it arm. Ama, ama is going out through your stool, slimy, sticky. The person is sticky. Hot. Yeah, always feeling hot. I said, pitta, pitta, heavy. I'm heavy. Heavy is your like, you know, like a kapha, heavy, you know. It's not, it's not the it's not the obesity. You know, kapha people will say rounded body, rounded, rounded wrist, rounded body. Hard, you know, very hard. He says, hard in his mind, you know, hard in his mind. A lot of other attributes, beautiful way I would have described the attributes. Clear, it's clear in his mind, clear. Cold, always feels cold. Water people always feels cold. So if you have a house with a husband and wife, water feels cold and husband is pitta feels hot, You'll be always seeing the, your thermistor. One thermistor goes down, thermistor goes up. Bodies, you know, the uh, house is heating and cooling. Dry, dry, dense, dry. Vata is very dry because of quality of air. If you put oil in the vata, you'll say oil is gone completely. On the other hand, kapha is very oily. If you put oil in kapha, the oil stays there. It will never go anywhere else. Dense, you know, the very dense, his body is dense in you know, a bone, they call it dense bone, you know, the dense bone. Light, it's very light, it's wet, very lightweight, you know. Liquid, liquid, you know, I see the, you know, you know always drooling, saliva is coming, you know, whenever the talk, the, the fluid is coming out, so liquidy, the body. Then you can think about other attributes like a uh, gross, you know. Oh, this person is gross. Look at that. We always use the term, you know, the attributes are always gross. Mobile, very mobile. Mobile in body and mind. That's butter. Mobile. Attributes of air. Oily. I'm very oily. You can see the skin is oily, face is oily, so face is oily. Rough, very rough. Rough skin, rough in talking, rough in the behavior, rough. So vata, the attributes are like a subtle. They're very cold, very dry, very rough, mobile. Pitta is on the other hand, very sharp, very sharp. Very hot. There's also a little liquid, you'll say pitta. So there's an oily. And also a little mobile. Pitta is not mobile like pata, but we always say uh, vata pushes pitta. Like vata is always a pushing pitta. Kapha, on the other hand, very slow. 
very soft, sticky, slimy, heavy, hard, dense. Then growth, obese. So now if you look at all the attributes, you need to do opposite practice, okay? So let's, you understood a little bit. Let's start the practice a little bit and I will go through the one attribute at a time and we're going to balance it. Now, you may not understand this today, but if you look at a person, I always give this example. It's so obvious, so obvious. A person cannot sit down, always moving around, you know, doing 10 different things at the same time. You know, always, you know, nothing is done. Vata. Pitta. If you go to Pitta house, you know, every, you know, they enter, every, the shoes in order, you know, lined up. Go to the house, everything online, everything. You know, because it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a attributes of, you know, the focus and the sharpness of your fire. Every clothes, if you go to the closet, every clothes, you know, in, in, in order, in the color coded from uh, small to large, you know, from lighter to darker, you know, it, it's so obvious. And then, then they're mentally, uh, Pitta is a king, you know. What are you to tell me? They know everything. Kapha, on the other hand, pardon my expression, is they don't give a damn, you know. Life goes on. Mm -hmm. They're all grounded. They love to lay down. Mm -hmm. They're heavy, grounding, slimy, sticky. You can name all the attributes they have. So in your practice, like asana practice, we say the law of opposite. So we'll do asana, pranayama, and meditation based on our Ayurvedic body type, vada, pitta, and kapha. And then if you look at the, our concept of our disease, disease, which we call ashuk in Sanskrit, when shuk is gone, it's called ashuk disease. Vata primarily gets a neuropsychiatric disorder, musculoskeletal disorders. And these are the gross ideas, you know, when you're an Ayurvedic practitioner, Ayurvedic physician, we do the pulse diagnosis, we do call it Ashtabhidda Parikha, eight ways of diagnosing, tongue, we have eight ways of diagnosing, then we treat a person. But grossly, Vata gets musculoskeletal neuropsychiatric disorders. Pitta gets inflammatory disease. Pitta gets the disease of the liver, disease of your heart. Kapha gets a disease related to your fluid in the body and grounding in the body. They get edema, swelling, fluid collection, congestive heart failure, renal failure. When there is a fluid collection, that is your kapha related disorder. Diabetes, trunkal obesity, these are kapha disorders. So we'll balance those. We'll show it to you. Now, if you look at practically, like if you send an email to a person, you get a a, a, a reply right away. That person is Vata because they're always looking at their emails, always read the emails, and they cannot wait. They will reply you right away. Send an email to a person, he or she looks at it, reads it 10 times, analyzing every word, analyzing every letters, then send you a nasty email back. It's a pitta. I'm the king, I'm the queen. Who are you to tell me? You know, I know everything. Kapha, you say one email, two email, three email, no response. After you meet them, after three minutes, send you three emails, what happened? Oh, send me another one, then we'll talk. Fourth email, they wake up. But when the vata goes out of balance, the primary mental condition is your anxiety. They're very anxious, they're very fearful. When pitta goes out of balance, the primary mental attribute, attitude is your anger. They become very angry. Also, maybe they're violent. You know. 
when kapha goes out of balance attachment you know after the fourth email I'm not going to let you go why did you send me the email please let me know what can i do for you so for the vata practice okay so for asana practice and then pranayama practice also you will see a vata person has a, a inhalation and a little longer exhalation but vata is irregular so it is a interrupted exhalation that is vata's breathing vata should learn coming hmm? consistency coming in your asanas coming in your pranayama practice so coming asana is a sthiram sukham asanam we'll do it see sthiram i'm sitting down this is called sukhasan if you're sitting like me put your feet underneath your knees put a straight in your spine and sit down this is sthiram i'm stillness sukham i'm happy if i feel any pain i back off i back off to the point when i'm sthir when i'm happy and in stages impossible become possible slowly and slowly this thing is going to happen coming breathing vata will do breathe out first as i explaining to you all the time in our pranayama practice lung is like a balloon it has a 4.5 liter capacity called vital capacity we only breathe 0.5 liter breathe out first take a deep breath in and breathe out effortlessly longer than breathing in try few more times just easily do it count of 2 in count of 4 out and in stages it gets better and better so i have the muscles of respiration which i can train these are called skeletal muscles so you do count of 4 in count of 8 out count of 6 in count of 12 out we can even do count of 10 in and count 20 out this we practice and also remember inhalation is sympathetic exhalation is parasympathetic so when you get a longer exhalation it is coming even it is consistency and i'm sitting down i'm very consistency and i'll show you what consistency means other component of your uh, balancing vata is grounding because the light they're always mobile they love to get up you will see if you go to yoga studio you will see all the skinny little vata ectomorphic people they look like ectomorphic they'll be jumping up and down going up and down very skinny they're uh, 90 pounds with the boots on and they eat continuously throughout the whole day never gain any weight because they're catabolic energy they're breaking down everything nothing becoming part of your body their agni is very poor bagni is like a visham agni the agni you know the food doesn't convert into sapta dhatu for them seven tissues so let's try another the hand mudra you know there are all mudras are all over our body we have mudras in the hand mudras in our physical asanas huh? brahma mudra yog mudra viparit karani mudra you have also mudras in your faces you know tongue A lot of mudras are there, but most powerful mudra is called Gana Mudra, Dhanu Mudra. Touch your index finger and thumb, and close your eyes. When you close your eyes, you quiet down your mind and become grounding. Breathe out first. Breathe in with a count of two in. Breathe out with a count of four out. The way you count one and a two in. Count of four. out let's progress a little bit if you cannot progress any longer you stop where you are and let me show you how to progress slowly hmm? let me jump one step at a time let me go to count of 4 in count of 8 out breathe out first count of 4 in
count of six in, count of 12 out. Count of eight in, count of sixteen out. And the practice is coming and cooling, palming and cupping. Take your hands, keep rubbing your hands, keep rubbing your hands, keep rubbing your hands. When you feel the warmth in your hand, if you're wearing glasses, remove your glasses. Take the hand like a cup, put it over your eyes like a cup. Let the eyes take all the heat from your hand. Then massage your forehead, massage your earlobe, massage your tragus, massage your auricle. This is called activating. The, the auricular branch of the vagus nerve is activation of your vagus nerve. Massage your face and also massage your neck. This is called your carotid sinus. It, uh, it activates your barrel receptors, it activates your vagal tone. We use the uh, carotid sinus massage uh, for your like a supraventricular tachycardia when heart rate goes higher. Wonderful coming and cooling practice. Vata practice. Another powerful Vata practice coming and cooling is your <clears throat> Brahmri Pranayam. And we'll give you the concepts, we'll give you the concepts. Like for Pitta, Pitta's normal breathing is long inhalation, very short exhalation. So Pitta breathes like this. So what you have to teach Pitta, how to extend the exhalation. So remember, Pitta is sympathetic, it's long inhalation. Pitta had to learn balance. What did Pitta had to learn? To activate parasympathetic, longer exhalation. I have a lot of yoga therapy teachers are following me here, a lot of healthcare providers. So I'm giving them the concept. And you all have your own practices. What you can do, you can pick and choose from your practice and adopt Ayurvedic yoga therapy. Brahmri Pranayam, Bumblebee breathing, is a very calming, cooling. Consistency. So consistency, I'm sitting like a, a, a Sukhasan. And then I need to balance. Remember, the balance is Ayurveda. Hmm? I'm in imbalance. Why? I'm right-footed, right-handed. I don't use my left hand. So if you're sitting in a Sukhasan, now see so you change your feet and sit down, see how you feel. You'll see you feel one side is easier than the other side. And the side you are feeling more problem you have to stay here a little longer. So in this posture, let's do a couple of Brahmri Pranayam, which is very important for your Vata. Vata also needs a focus. Remember, his mind is all over, you know, it's a, it's a mobile. Their primary attribute, the mobile. They're very light, they're very dry. So you have done all done a Brahmri Pranayam with me. You shut down your five senses. You create another vibration. Your brain has a vibration. Two vibration interact, cancels. It's called harmonic resonance. Your mind quiets down, body vibration quiets down. Your vata-related disorder gets balanced. So you put your index finger in your forehead. Use your three fingers to close your eyes. Use your thumb to close your ear and you close your mouth. You also can do this with the Kalashanmukhi Mudra. 
like you can change your fingers, you know, you can put your, you know, fingers will come to eyes, then come to the nose, come your mouth. But this is a nice way to do that. You know, so you put it your three fingers, close your ear, close your mouth. We'll breathe out first. We'll breathe in with a, uh, and then breathe out through your nose with the sound of a B. So breathe out first. Take a deep breath in. One more time. Breathe out first. Take a deep breath in. Again, practice pumping and cupping. Rub your hands, rub your hands. Have the warmth in your hand. If you're wearing glasses, remove your glasses. Put your hands over your eyes and face. As I take all the heat from your hand, massage your forehead, massage your ear lobe, behind the ear, auricle, tragus, face, and neck in front and the back. So, what are balancing attributes? Calming, consistency, grounding. It's a consistency. Let's see, I'm sitting in a sukhasan. Consistency is I'm not getting into padmasan. Hmm? From here, I'll go in stages. I take my heel all the way to the back. I put my foot on the top. My knees drops down. This is called sukhasan. Hmm? Perfect pose. And when you do that, you don't try. This will come to you. How will it come to you? You relax your body and mind. Grounding. This is a grounding, powerful grounding asana for vata. So remember the attributes. Opposing to vata is a coming, consistency, grounding, slow. Because they're mobile, you know, they're very mobile. They have to do slow, steady, strengthening. So we'll do, we'll practice your sun salutation. We'll do sun salutation for vata. We'll do sun salutation for the kapha. Because vata will be very slow, steady sun salutation. And kapha will be very rapid sun salutation. Because kapha needs to be warming up. And for Pitta, will do cooling. This is called Chandra Namaskar. Consistency. See, from here, I take my another foot on the top. This is called your Ardha Padmasan Swastika Asan. Remember, all the practice is your individual. And what are the signs you're looking for? No pain. If it causes pain, you're going to back off. Even if pain here, you're going to back off. But start somewhere. Then the yogic anatomy is called five koshas. Annamaya kosha to pranomaya kosha. To manomaya kosha, viganomaya kosha, anandamaya kosha. Three bodies, gross body, subtle body, and causal body. Sthulo sharir, shukha sharir, karana sharir. So any imbalance you create in your physical body shows up in your breath. So if this is causing imbalance, it will show up in your breath. Your breath will be interrupted. As long as your breath is effortless. What is effortless breathing? Effortless breathing is your able to talk, able to breathe. See, when I sit down, a, a powerful relaxation is separation of your toes. I put my 
I put my finger in between the toes. I've shown you these practices over and over because you have to do it in a consistent practice. Put my other hand here. Consistently, I'll be doing it. Hmm? Yoga practice. So, you go back now, balancing to the opposite side. So what pitta will be do? What are the pitta attributes that will be doing asana and pranayam? Pitta is a cooling, cooling practice. A lot of practices are cooling. Chandra Namaskar, moon salutation is cooling. Sitali Pranayam, Sitkari Pranayam, it's cooling. They're very focused. They need to do diffusive, diffusive, they're very sharp, they need to do dull. Hand touching of feet, Padha Hastasana. We'll do it next, you know. So we'll show you the Pitta, Pitta disorder. And another concept, if you can remember, that will, for, especially for the yoga teachers, that the sight of this energy, catabolic, metabolic, and anabolic energy, the catabolic energy, vata, that lies in your lower part of your intestine called colon. Metabolic energy, pitta, it resides in your small intestine where the metabolism is done. And anabolic energy, for kapha, because it's building up, it's in your stomach when the digestion process starts. Upper part in your lung, in your sinuses, in thorax. So, any asana below your belly button, below your umbilicus, grounding is balancing your vata. Any asana related to your belly button, focusing on your belly button, is your balancing your pitta. So you know many of the asanas, say you do a uh, ushtrasana, camel pose. When you're the camel pose, you're putting there a focus in the belly button. Or asanas like, you say, uh, I'm doing a no kasan, boat pose. Focus is here in my belly button. Or a bridge pose, setu ban sarvanga asana, bridge pose, raising up, the focus will be on the belly button. So any asanas related to belly button focusing is your balancing your pitta. Any asanas above your belly button balancing kapha. Hmm? Mountain pose, getting a whole high up mountain pose, you know, upward mountain pose, oblique mountain pose, all standing up asanas. Hmm? Three pose, vikasana, balancing poses. So now if you see consistency, I'm putting myself in a Padmasana. If you can see me, I'm in a perfect Padmasana. So Padmasana came to me. So what the practice was? Consistency. What consistency was that? First I was in a Sukhasana, easy pose. Gradually I became into your Siddhasana. Perfect pose, going to the half lotus, Ardha Padmasan, or called Swastika Asan. Then came into the final pose. This is your Padmasan. It's very calming, very calming. You know, people say, oh, how do you get it? This is a, no, this is the most powerful relaxing asan. This creates a relaxation response, creates activation of your parasympathetic tone. So I'm not rushing, I'm giving you the ideas, the concepts, especially for yoga teachers. Strengthening, it's a hand strength. So you can see, Tulasan, Tulasan is a hand strength. Bakasan, Moirasan, Moiriasan. These are very advanced asanas. But ad, there is nothing called advance. It comes to you when you are having relaxation. So all of my yoga teachers are wants to see this. So put your hand on the side. So very simply put your hand on the side. Because you feel very light in your body and mind. 
push your hand down, your whole body goes high up, and body stays high up. You're smiling, you're talking, you're breathing. You can stay up as long as you want. Hand strength, strengthening. Grounding, powerful grounding is your yoga mudra. So if you can even sit down with your sukhasana, you can do a yoga mudra. Put your hands to the back, look straight, keep your spine straight. Always remember you are breathing. People ask me, when do I breathe in, when do I breathe in? No, you are always continuously, you are effortless breathing. Breathing out, slowly breathe in. And slowly keep coming down and listen to your body signal. There is no pain. So you can keep on going. If you have pain, you back off. Find a place where you got a comfortable discomfort. If you're not, coming down. And then look at your breath. If your breath is effortless, if you can keep on talking, if you're still breathing, put your head all the way down. Touch your head to the ground. You are here. Keep doing breathing out. Longer than breathing in. At least five to ten breaths. Powerful grounding asana. Yoga mudra. Hmm? Another, say, you know, for, for pitta, a, a dull, diffusive. There is, there is no focus. And there is no sharpness. So you can sit down, like it's uh, called your malasan. Hmm? Put your separated. Look at that. In a malasan, your knees are relaxed, hip is relaxed, huh? your knees are relaxed, back is relaxed. Then relaxation of the hand, as you know. If you separate your fingers, your hands get relaxed. If you extend your wrist, wrist gets relaxed. Put your one hand inside, other hand inside. Bring it close to you. Close your eyes. Breathe in and out. So these are grounding pose. Balancing vata. This is also very diffusive, very dull. Hmm? Also energizing. Energizing your kapha. Beautiful asana like this. We love this asana practice. And it comes to you. Mm -hmm. So for pitta, what will be the other attributes to balance? Gentle. Pitta is anger, hot, gentle. Gentle asanas, very gentle asanas. Very nice, your say. Brahma mudra, neck. Even if you can sit down, I do sit down here, like breathe in, put your head to the back, breathe out, slowly drop your head in the front. Breathe in. We have done all in the past, you know, it's all of them in my uh, recorded poses. There are four stages of Brahma mudra. Breathe out, breathe in first. Drop it into one side and same breathing cycle. Come back in the middle. Deep breath in, drop in the opposite side. Come back in the middle. All the way to the back. Come back in the middle. All the way to the other side. Finally, drop your head down, slowly rotate. So you can do all different ways. You can do sitting in a chair. I'm sitting in a malasan. I'm totally relaxed, comfortable. But this is also, we call it tridoshikasan. That means it's balancing my vata, pitta, and kapha all together to the opposite side. It's a wonderful practice. So what other qualities? Pitta will have a gentle, relaxing, forgiving. 
they've been holding on to it, forgiving, forgiving practices. Remember, yoga is your whole life. Dhinacharya, daily routine, forgiving practices. Surrendering, you surrender. Let's see one hand strength, it's called Bakasan. I have a lot of yoga teachers are here. So they love to see these asanas. Put your hand here. Hmm? Very nice Bakasan. Huh? Hand here. Stabilize your elbows. Push your hand down. When you push your hand down, your whole body goes high up and stays high up and will stay high up. Crow pose. Bakasan, hand strength, what up it about? For kapha. Hmm? So what will be the kaphas? Kapha is grounding. Kapha is challenge, challenging. You know, you have to give some challenge to kapha. So this is also kapha. Bakasan. Moirasan, you do Moirasan, that is also challenging. Energizing, Kapha needs energizing, Kapha is grounding, energizing. We'll do a sun salutation, Surya Namaskar, a little faster. Energizing, it's like your almost cardiac conditioning, like your, uh, uh, we call it a you know, treadmill, you know, treadmill test for cardiac conditioning test. You see the, once you know the attributes, you are able to balance it. What are the other attributes? Your, they're heavy, lightening, they will do something lightening. You'll see lightening upward practices or they will practice called a, your Sankha Praksalan for proper elimination. There will be a lightening practice. Moving, they're grounding, they're moving, they need to move. We'll see when you do meditation, the Kapha will be doing the moving meditation. Kapha will be the meditation when they're walking meditation, moving. See, if you put a Kapha on the eyes closed and you go to the meditation, and they are, that is their normal attribute. That is not Ayurvedic yoga therapy. That is a law of opposite. Stimulating. They need some stimulus. Stimulating. You need to stimulate Kapha because they're always grounding. They're sitting down. Doing nothing, you know, watching TV throughout all the time, stimulating. Hmm? Sweating, you know, our yoga practice is we say half of your energy, what you can do. But for the kapha, we push them, call it stimulating. Kapha will be stimulating. Warming, and to warm up. The faster sun salutation, warming up. They're a little heavier, weight reducing. They will do asanas for the weight reducing. We'll do asana for your obesity. Obesity. Very important. A lot of people ask me about carpal tunnel. You know, the carpal tunnel, you know, is called the, you know, there is a compression of the median nerve here. And our Western medicine is your reductionist. So they always look at here. But you see, it is a tightness. It is relaxed. So the relaxation of the wrist, you know, the relaxation of the hand, we practice all the time. Fundu is like called baby fist, thumb inside and close, adhi mudra, balamushti mudra. You can do it with breathing. You can put your hand in front, breathe out first, take a deep breath in, breathe out, put a hand in, breathe in, breathe out. Wrist gets relaxed like Extension, breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out. So, you know, like a, when you do your 
uh, years, you know, this is called activation of your auricular branch of your vagus nerve. Or is sometimes, you know, inside the, you know, your ear canal, if you stimulate a little bit, you know, it's called a erogenous zone. It's a parasympathetic active. But, but for a, for a, <clears throat> see, you have to remember one thing. Yoga practice is holistic. It's here, but maybe your posture, which is causing your carpal tunnel. So if I can put my hand here, initially hand will be like this, but slowly and slowly hand will be like this, all the way to the ground. When the hand comes down here, carpal tunnel will be gone. Carpal tunnel will be gone. Carpal tunnel will be gone when you can do it. Your carpal tunnel is a water-related disorder. You can do like your uh, Paschim Namaskar. It's like say, put a prayer pose in the hand, the back, prayer pose to the back. And you have seen, all of you have seen me doing it. Let's do it one more time. If you're, if you're, if you're practicing with me, sit down comfortably. It's called Paschim Namaskar, prayer pose to the back. Take your hands all the way to the back. And if you get comfortable here, let it be here. Slowly and slowly, you can put your hand like a prayer pose. Close your eyes, do your breathing, breathing out longer than breathing in. And slowly and slowly, you can do this. Very nice way of doing a Paschim Namaskar. As a vata disorder, vata also likes to focus a powerful breathing focus is called ujjayi pranayam. Ujjayi can be done very slowly and also very therapeutically. We'll show it to you when you do a pranayama practice. So once you understand all this, so for the breathing pranayama you will see uh, we'll do a pranayama. Vata will be longer exhalation, very smooth exhalation, coming consistency. Same as for pitta. Pitta has a sh, has a long inhalation, short exhalation. To learn how to extend that exhalation. Kapha has a heavy breathing. They have a little bit of a, you know, we call a lot of congestion in the upper part. So they'll be doing the warming, warming pranayama, like Kapalvati pranayama, hmm? Bastrika pranayama, heavy Bastrika pranayama. Uh, same with meditation. Meditation will 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 show it to you. So uh, you have seen all the grounding poses. Uh, we can do a little bit of, you know, standing poses, laying down poses, the different one. But maybe mm, for the fun of it. Yeah, a lot of my uh, yoga teachers wants me to do a uh, called a Moyuriyasan, Moyurasan and Moyuriyasan. What are the differences? There are three Moyurasans. Moyurasan, Moyuriyasan, and Pongu Moyurasan. Okay. So in, in a normal, in a normal Moyurasan, you can see how to do a normal Moyurasan. You can see me well now. You put your hand here, very nice way, and put your whole body in your elbow, put your body in the front. Let me do a little bit of a back, so it'll be in, in the middle of it. A little bit here, put the body here, push your body in the front. When you push your body in the front, your whole body goes like that. You can stay here a little longer and longer with effortless breathing. Moyurasan. <coughs> Female version, Moyuriyasan. Grounding poses are great for your vata and pitta. I don't expect all of you to do this asanas. It will come to you. I'm showing it to my yoga teachers, long-term yoga practitioners, how to do it so effortlessly. So effortless Mayurasan is a female version of the Mayurasan. First you do a Padmasana, lotus pose. Take your one foot here, one foot here. See how easily I can get into Padmasana? 
But when I was showing it to you, you notice that I did it in, in stages. Sukhasan, Siddhasan, Ardha Padmasan, then Padmasan. In a Padmasan, you do Mayuriyasan. So in a Padmasan, you get your body high up, put your hands here, put your body on your elbow, push your body in the front, then your whole body goes high up. Mayuriyasan. And then, see, Effortless ease. I'm talking. I'm breathing. I don't have any effort on this asana. Why? I'm totally relaxed. See, I have some saliva in my mouth. When you get a saliva in your mouth, that's a parasympathetic activation. I'm having a relaxation response. Finally, is a Pongu Moirasana. <coughs> Pongu Moirasana, a little bit <laughs> more advanced, you know. Pongu means lane. Uh, peacock lost one of the hands, so you do a one-handed mudrasana. A grounding pose is a very powerful pose. One pose is your, uh, always, always, always want to show it to you, is your vajrasana. <clears throat> always do vajrasana, you know, try to sit down on your heel and spine straight. This is a primary activation of parasympathetic tone, it's a relaxation response. So, and then slowly and slowly, what you can do, you can separate your feet and sit down on the ground. Your spine is straight, head is supported. It's a, your activation of parasympathetic tone is for digestion. So what you do after a full meal, you sit down like this. It is called your, your uh, parasympathetic activation. A nice asana of the grounding asana is your mundukasana, hmm? frog pose. And when you do these asanas, you even can analyze yourself, which doshas or your body type you are balancing. This is balancing your vata, grounding. Vata pushes pitta, this is also grounding your pitta. Then you'll be massaging your stomach, Jatharagni, with your Mandukasana. That will be your Kapha, balancing your Kapha. It will be Tridoshikasana. So use your hand relaxing. What is the most important relaxation is your Adi Mudra, Balo Mushti Mudra, thumb inside and close. Put it at the level of your belly button. Breathe out first. Slowly take a deep breath in. Slowly breathe out. Suck your stomach in a little bit, but keep breathing and start coming down. Slowly and slowly again, listen to your body. No pain, effortless breathing. Come all the way down to the ground. Stay here. It's a wonderful practice. Mandukasana. Ignite your jatar agni. People who are studying Ayurveda, or people understand Ayurveda a little well, these practices are called in the four Ayurvedic terms Agni Deepana. It ignites your Jathar Agni. Agni is a term in Ayurveda which about when we eat food, the food gets digested. It's called digestive fire. Then food converts into seven tissues Rashodhatu, Raktodhatu, Mamsodhatu, Medodhatu, Ostidhatu, Majjadhatu, Shukradhatu. Plasma, red blood cell, muscle cell, fatty cell, bones, nervous tissue, reproductive tissue, then produces substance called ojas. Ojas is your cellular immunity. Prana, teja, ojas. Prana is your cellular communication. Teja is your cellular intelligence. And ojas is cellular immunity. So feel very relaxed, very nice with this Vajrasana. Very important asana. You can do, say, Gomukhasana. Gomukhasana is another very powerful asana. 
And uh, one, one very important asana you will do is your sun salutation. Let's do a nice sun salutation, which is called therapeutic sun salutation. Therapeutic sun salutation means sun salutation for different doshas. Surya Namaskar for Vata, Surya Namaskar for the Kapha. And also remember, Pitta doesn't listen to anybody, but Pitta listen to themselves. So they will focus in the self, we can do Pitta. Or Pitta will do a Chandra Namaskar. Getting up from the ground, called sit, rise, test, is a powerful indicator of your health, balancing health. So best way to do it, you're able to sit down in a, your malasan. Oh, if you do a malasan, you know, you'll feel how good you feel on this squatting pose. And as I told you, showed it to you, you know, Daddy, the Nucharya, how it easily helps your elimination. Then you get up without a support. Very nice practice. Sitting down and getting up. And then balancing, remember going against the grain of your habit is yoga. So what is the going against the grain of your habit is your? Say I'm comfortable standing up like this. So I practice standing my feet together. So if you can do with me, try to do it. See the difference. Think about your ear, your shoulder, your hip and the ankle in the same line. You can do very much in the morning. I do it. I get up into the, against the wall. I put my body. If you can see me from the distance, I will put my body here. Hmm? I'll put my first, my heel in the, against the wall, hips against the wall, my shoulders, my head. Slowly I put all the hands high up. This is my mountain pose. In fact, I close my eyes. I do my breathing. I feel so comfortable. That is my almost my sabhasana, standing up. So if you can balance, so if you can do this, this is another very nice practice. Cross your feet, crossing feet, if you can sit down, crossing feet, if you can get up. Then do opposite practice. Practice your other foot in the back. You can sit down, you can get up. Wonderful practice. Another thing you do on standing up before you do a sun salutation, the balancing poses. Most important balancing is, is your a mountain pose, but it's a little bit of, we call it a, a different mountain pose. When you fall down, we put our hand first. Hand is our balance. Then our vision, vision is our balance. So if I take my hand component out, what you can do, you can do a Paschim Baddha Namaskar. You can hold your hand, take your hand, hold into your left arm. Use your left hand, hold onto your right arm. Now put your feet together. See if you can stand on your non-dominant foot. What is a non-dominant foot? I'm right-handed, right-footed. See if I can stand on my left foot. Hmm? Try this. You'll see it is initially. 10 seconds will feel like 10 years. 20 seconds, 40 seconds. Finally do an impossible task. Close your eyes if you can do it. If you can close your eyes and stand at doing it, you have overcome all kinds of imbalances in your body and mind. Balance it. Change your hand again. Now to the opposite side. Right hand holding the left arm. Left hand over your right arm holding your left arm. Now see if I can stand on my right foot. Slowly close my eyes. See if I can stay in this. Wonderful practice. Prepare, prepare your body and mind. Now, you'll be doing a sun salutation. 
will be doing sun salutation, therapeutic sun salutation. 12 asanas. Always remember as a practitioner or yoga teacher, 12 asanas. To know the name of the asanas in Sanskrit, and there is a mantra with each asana. Why? Because vata is mobile. Vata is a mantra. What is mantra? Man is the mind. Tra is a vehicle to quiet it down. Mantra is not the sound. Mantra is a vibration. Hmm? So we'll do the with the breathing, but you will do the mantra in your mind. So let me go over with you all the asanas and the breathing. Then we'll do the practice and practice slowly. It's called therapeutic sun salutation. There's a book called Dynamic Sun Salutation. And I wrote the whole chapter on that, on therapeutic sun salutation. The first one will be called Pranamasan. Hmm? If you do a breathing, you breathe out first. Call call Om Mitrayanama. Next your hands will go to go high up. We'll do it, but I'm just giving you the name. Hands will go up. It's called Hasta Uttan Asan. Then we'll do the opposite breathing. Breathe in. Started with breathing out, we'll do the breathe in. Om Raviyayanama. Then hands will come down, called Padahastasan. Breathing out, called Om Raviyayanama. Then the right foot will go to the back, chest will open up, called Asa Sanchalanasan. Opposite breathing, breathe out. Bhanobe Nama. Then go to Parvatasan. Khagaya Nama. Go down into like a Ashtanga Namaskar. Pushne Nama. Get up into a Cobra Pose. Hiranagarvaya Nama. Go back to the Mountain Pose, Parvatasan. Marichaya Nama. And go back again to your Asa Sanchalanasan, Adityanama. Then you get into your Padahastasan, Sabitriyanama. Then you get into your Hasta Uttanasan, Arkenama. Come back to your Pranamasan, Bhaskarayanama. Let's do it. In a Vata, you will do very slowly. Remember, coming consistency and Kapha will do a rapid. So, sitting here, standing here, Pranamasan, breathing in, and you do the mantra in your mind. So if you start breathing in, you're breathing out, let's do one with the breathing in, one with breathing out. Huh? Breathe out first, take a deep breath in. Pranamasana, breathe out slowly. What you can do, you can bend your hand, put your index finger, and slowly keep an eye, this is Vata, because Vata is very flexible, Vata is very mobile. So they need the focus, they need the grounding. Hasta Uttan Asan. Breathe in, slowly come down. Pada Hasta Asan. See, this is also diffusive, this is dull, this is for also for your Pitta. Remember, the Asanas have all the Varieties of qualities, hands on both sides, and head slowly goes, touches your knee. Breathing in, breathe out, left foot goes to the back, right knee comes in front. See, we're doing very slowly, we're very consistent way. Chest opens up, look high up, asa sanchalan asan. Breathing in, right foot will go to the back. You look at your belly button and you're grounded completely. Breathing in, breathing out, Ashtanga Namaskar. Put your knees on the ground, chest on the ground, whole body in the ground. 
The mantra here is the Om Pushne Nama. Get up here into a cobra pose very gently. Hiranagarbhaya Nama and breathing in. Hmm? Go back to the Parvatasana again. Heel on the ground. Look at your belly button. Samari Chaya Nama and breathe out. Left foot comes in the front. All the pressure comes into the left knee. Chest opens up. Look high up. Asasan Chalanasan. Aditya Nama. And we breathe in. Right foot comes in the front. Hand is on both sides. Hand goes towards your knee. Padahastasana. Sabitriya Nama. Breathe out. Slowly come back high up. Again, look at your on the index finger, all the way to the back. Hastavuttanasan, breathing in. Arkanama. And then hand comes in the front as a pranamasan, breathing out. Bhaskaraya Nama. These are actually 12 names of your son and 12 asanas, actually six asanas, and then go back to the same asanas again. Huh? Let's do one more in an opposing breathing pattern and using the opposite foot to create a balance for the vata people. So hands in the front. Now start with the breathing out. Breathing in, hasta uttanasan, very slow, follow your tip of your finger. Breathing out, hand goes down, padahastasan. Here mantra is your om, suryayanam. This time your right foot goes to the back, left knee is in the front, chest opens up, look high up. Asasanchalanasana. This will be your breathing out. Left foot goes to the back. You look at your belly button, Parvatasana. Slowly put your knee in the ground. Chin on the ground. Ashtanga Namaskar. Ashta Anga. Eight parts of your body comes down to the ground. Breathing in. Pushne Nama. Hiranagarbhaya Nama. Cobra pose with your breathing out. Breathing in. Go back to your Parvatasan. Looking at your belly button. Heel on the ground. Marichaya Nama. Right foot comes in the front. All the pressure on the right knee. Look high up. Left foot comes in the front. Hand is on both sides. Head touching your knee. And slowly hand goes all the way high up. And then breathe in. Started from breathing out, ended with breathing in. 12 asanas, alternate breathing with your. So for kapha, you will do a rapid sun salutation. So we'll do a little rapidly. We're not going to talk any name of the asanas. And we'll do about three or four sun salutation in a minute. 
and we'll see how easy it is to do. We'll do a set of two, set of four, set of eight, the 108 sun salutation. Let's start for kapha. Rapid sun salutation for kapha. Cooling practice, take out all the heating component and it's your Chandra Namaskar. Let's do one set of Chandra Namaskar for Pitta. These are all in my book. If you get one of my book, now my book, you probably you all have, and you can see my book is the Yoga Therapy, Ayurveda and Western Medicine. And it's called Healthy Convergence. Three modalities of therapy, Yoga Therapy and Ayurveda, very important. All the concept of Ayurveda is Yoga Therapy. So let's look at a Chandra Namaskar, see how Chandra Namaskar cools you down. Hands in front, pranamasana. Breathe out. Breathe in, hastutthanasana. And breathe out, instead of padahastasana, slowly sit down, both of it. Breathe in, slowly take your left foot to the back, but take the heating out, so drop your knee on the ground. Your hands there, and then raise both the hands high up. Breathe in, breathe out, take your right foot to the back, again knee on the ground. Then bring more cooling with a child pose, balasan. So hand goes high up, breathe in, and slowly you come down, in a child's pose, balasana, very cooling asana for pitta. Let's get up into a cobra pose, bhujangasana. Then again, go back into a child's pose. Slowly get your hands high up. And again, slowly come in the front. Right foot comes first, hand on the both side. Breathe in, hand goes way high up. Breathe out, hand on the side. Right foot comes in the front and head comes towards your knee. Padahastas. Breathe out, hand goes all the way high up. Hastavuttana asan. And breathe in, hand comes in the front. Started in breathing out. Finish in breathing in. So wonderful practice. Chandra Namaskar. You can do a lot of asanas, as I said, for pitta. 
You're laying down. We have done all the asanas before. You do butt pose, no kasan. It's a very nice asan. And uh, bridge pose, Setuban Sarvanga asan. Let's do one thing for the next few minutes. Give you the concept of pranayama in Ayurvedic standpoint. So for your vata, you will need a focus, extend your exhalation. We have already practiced at the beginning, count of two in, count of four out, count of four in, count of eight out, breathing out first, take a deep breath in, slowly breathe out. But the most important pranayama for vata is your alternate nostril breathing. The mobile, they're in a tremendous imbalance. Remember, 80 types of disease is from vata. 40 types of disorder is from pitta. 20 types of disorder is from your kapha. And also we all have a different component of all the three energies. So when you do a pulse diagnosis, when you put a finger in, the index finger, this is called vata, this is pitta, this is kapha. Sharponari, Mandukhnari, Hangsanari. Feels like a snake, it's a vata. Feels like a frog, pitta. Feels like a very gentle swan, it's a kapha. So what, I, what I'm going to have now, I'm moving, I'm talking. My vata is very high up. That's called Vikriti. Prakriti is your type of your body type you're born with. Imbalance you create is called Vikriti. So my primary Vikriti is your now vata. vata. I can feel my pulse under my index finger is the most prominent pulse. It is the energy in the pulse. Totally opposite of Western pulse. Western pulse is a rate, rhythm, volume, but it is energy in the pulse. Catabolic energy, metabolic energy, anabolic energy. So let's practice alternate nostril breathing and focusing. How you do a focus with your vata. Focus one is a your breath centered meditation. We'll do it a little bit. Then we'll say mantra meditation. You can do a, a mantra. Mantra. Man quite down. Then you can do a visual imagery, like you're sitting down, you're looking at like the ocean, or look at a blue sky, or look at the tip of your mountain, or a flame of a candle. Pitta will do breath-centered meditation called Kebul Kumbhoka. So let's do alternate nostril breathing. Left hand, use your Gyanu Mudra or a Dhanu Mudra, index finger. Right hand, Close your right nostril. You don't have to close all the way down. Just close underneath your right nostril. That is good enough. Breathe out through your left nostril. Breathe in through your left nostril. Drop your right ring finger and little finger. Close your left nostril. Breathe out through your right nostril. Breathe in through your right nostril in. Close your right nostril, breathe out through your left nostril. Left nostril is controlled by your right brain. Left nostril is cooling. Left nostril is called Chandranari, Ida, moon energy. Right nostril is controlled by the left brain. Left brain is analytical. Left brain is heating. Right nostril breathing is called Suranari, sun energy. Pingala. So you continue this, you keep on doing it in your effortless way. Then you bring a focus. What you do, put your index finger and middle finger in between your eyebrows, close your eyes, bring your focus there, and to bring a balance, you can take your left hand, hold to your right ear lobe. This is called a super brain yoga. 
And many a time we said you can do on both sides the same way, but here you keep on doing your alternate nostril breathing. Within a short time, you enter into a total area of concentration. Wonderful technique for your vata. This is called a Vayu Pradhan Pranayama. For daily practice, we do one hour, 25 minutes of asanas, 25 minutes of pranayama, 10 minutes of meditation. Continue this, and this is the technique you learn, and you continue it when you do in your daily practice. Alternate nostril breathing, total balance in both sides of the brain. You will do alternate nostril breathing without closing your nostril. It's called meditative alternate nostril breathing. We'll practice during meditation. See, when we are in a, my body and mind is together, my gross body and subtle body blends together. So uh, my sthulo sharit and shukha sharit, I close my eyes, this is my subtle body. I can even clearly see I'm in sattic space or I'm in, you know, my, I'm, I'm walking in the street or I'm getting into sattic space or entering through the door. I'm going to sit down where I teach my, I clearly see my body, same way. By eyes and close, I can touch tip of my nose, I can touch my head, I can touch my left great toe and the right knee. That's why I'll be able to control my breathing without closing my nostril. For Pitta, it will be a cooling pranayama. A cooling pranayama will be your, like a Sitali pranayama. Sitali pranayama again, a relaxation, put your hand there. This is called Adhi Mudra. This relaxes your hand, but relaxes your whole body and mind. So many a time I always practice. In fact, I've been practicing so long with Adi Mudra. My hand will go to Adi Mudra without me even knowing. It's my daily practice. So that in Sitali, in Sitali Pranayama, what you do, I want to come a little close, so you can see me a little better, that stick your tongue out, roll your tongue, and breathe through your mouth. Remember one thing, in a yogic practice, you never breathe through your mouth. You always breathe through your nostril. Why? When you breathe through your nose, air goes in through your nose. Air is your personal air conditioner. It filters every dirt in your air. Outside air is warm. It will cool it down. If it is cool, it is going to warm it up. Then the air goes on the side of your nostril, called a turbinate, which guides it towards your larynx, towards your lung. And during the process, it also secretes nitric oxide from mucosa of the sinuses. Nitric oxide is a powerful vasodilator. It also acts in your endothelium, endothelial relaxation. It secretes your cyclic GMP, also secretes the acetylcholine, which is a powerful transmitter of your parasympathetic tone. For the physicians, you understand, epinephrine, norepinephrine is a mediator of your sympathetic tone and your nitric oxide, cyclic GMP, acetylcholine is a transmitter of your parasympathetic tone. When you breathe through your mouth, you have no idea where the air has gone. It has gone to your lung or your stomach. But somebody says, I always have to breathe through your mouth. So what you can do, you can breathe through your nostril and breathe out through your mouth. This physiological, but only changes what happened. We have a muscles of inspiration and muscles of expiration. So when you breathe through your nostril, the muscles of inspiration is working, and you breathe out through your nostril, muscles of expiration are working. So if you keep on breathing out through your mouth, the muscles of expiration doesn't work well. So in a Sitali Pranayam, that is called Sitkari Pranayam, called Sodanta Pranayam, all the Pranayam for your Pitta. 
Stick your tongue out, roll and breathe in through your mouth. Close your mouth, breathe out through your nose. Always try to do pranayama with the eyes closed. Your eyes closed, roll your tongue out. In a short time, everything cools down inside. Very good for women with hot flushes. Very good for with a uh, acid reflux disease. Somebody says, I cannot stick my tongue out. Okay? You can breathe through your teeth, called Sitkari Pranayam, through your teeth. It also slowly dries up. It dries up your mouth, hmm? dries up your tongue. So you get a drying practice. You know, people wet like a kapha, like, like pitta. It's a drying practice. For kapha, uh, you need energizing. So energizing will be your, like a bastrika pranayam. Bastrika is your um, active inhalation, active exhalation. We can do so many ways the bastrika. In fact, we can do a bastrika during our, uh, like a, we do uh, um, yogic sit-ups, yogic push-ups and all this time. But like see, you know, bellows. So if you could do active inhalation like, You can do it with your hand raising high up. You do it in a slow speed called your Ishwar. The speed will be Ishwar. Okay, the medium speed is called your Soham. Soham. And the rapid speed is called a Vishnu. Vishnu. We do a cycle of this for Kapha 20 slow, 20 medium and 20 fast. Then we do this, repeat the cycle, two cycles, four cycles, six cycles. So let's do one cycle for you for demonstration. And you continue with me. And if you cannot, you could stop there and keep doing breathing out longer than breathing in. When you pull it down, you'll pull it down with a Adhi Mudra. Huh? So you can see me a little better now. So let's start 20 slow. I'll do my eyes closed and with a sequence of your Ishwar. Medium pace, so hum, 20 of them, huh? Very rapid, Vishnu. Vishnu, very good for Kapha, 20 of them, Bish, Bish, Nu. One cycle, 
you removed all the carbon dioxide, but a fresh oxygen came in. If you take a breath in now, it's called a three stage breathing, dirghashash, and you can breathe out. You inflate all lower lobe, middle lobe, upper lobe of the lung. That is a normal breathing. Your brain gets a signal. It's called neuroplasticity. That's where you need to breathe. And you'll be breathing the same way. When you reduce the number of breathing, that's your health. Kapal Bhati Pranayama. Kapal is the forehead. Bhati is a light. Where the name came from, it is called your igniting your Agni. Agni Deepana. Your Jathar Agni. A lot of people in my Western medical background ask me, what is Agni? You know, Agni is a normal perfusion, normal innervation, normal function of an organ. So the C stomach, gastrointestinal system, is supplied by the vagus nerve. So vagus nerve is, you know, one in anterior and posterior gastroesophageal junction called anterior and posterior vagus. This will stimulate your vagus nerve. Stimulational vagus nerve will call parasympathetic activation, will you call your vasodilatation, proper perfusion of an organ. So bring your awareness in your belly button. There is a balloon, diaphragm, there's a balloon. You push your balloon in the back, the air will come out. Nothing moves, only the Belly button goes to the back. There's a lot of other techniques. You call your Agnisar Kriya. Then you got all the, your uh, uh, Bandhas, you know, Udiyani Band, your uh, Jalandhar Band, your Mula Band. We do all the practice, you know, Pranayama practice. You can see it, one of my uh, Pranayama practice to improve lung function. So again, hand do a Adhi Mudra. And in fact, when you do the pranayama called pranayam, controlling, restraining your prana, life force, and hand mudras also guides your prana to your organ of healing, called pranic healing. We do all different mudras. You can look at my called mudras in your health in your hand, hasta mudras. So eyes closed. One per second, if you're Practicing with me, keep practicing. Just bring your awareness in the belly button, push it to the back, let the air come out. If you're new to it, put your hand here, you'll see air come out. It's massaging your stomach. Keep on doing it, let me tell you the benefit. Massaging is a liver, massaging your spleen, massaging your pancreas. Massaging your small intestine, massaging your colon, or female, massaging your uterus, massaging your tubes, massaging your ovaries. For the men, it massaging is your prostate, massaging your lung, hitting the diaphragm and massaging your lung. So all the retained carbon dioxide and all other air is all going to come out. It's a detoxifying pranayama. Between the lung is an organ called heart. So underneath it is also massaging the heart very gently. When you massage an organ, organ function gets better. Even when the heart stops. We do a chest compression called CPR, cardiopulmonary resuscitation, massaging your heart from outside. This is massaging your heart from inside. This is your internal CPR. We keep on doing it. You keep on doing it unless you have some effort in breathing. This is, we do it all the time, the normal breathing. We generally do between five to 10 minutes. Very good for cough related disorder, very good for diabetes, your trunkal obesity, the obesity you have it here. Kapal Bhati Pranayama. It in increases your teja. Teja is your, like a pitta, teja is your, the glow around you. So 
So it looks like you are glowing. You have a picture, the picture like a picture of a Buddha, a picture of a Jesus, looks like you are glowing. And that's so called Kapal Bhati. Kapal is a forehead, Bhati is a shining. A lot of other interpretation, but it's a Teja. And when you're practicing, people will say, you know, looks like, you know, you are glowing. For Vata also, generally when you're doing a practice, you're going to focus and a focus is called Ujjayi Pranayam. Ujjayi basically your relaxing way, you control your larynx and try to breathe in, initially do breathing in and out. Very relaxed, you know, what it does, it stimulates your superior and inferior laryngeal nerve, it activates your vagus nerve. <laughs> Called ocean breath, called a breathing like a dark breather. Finally, what you can do, you can slowly do a therapeutic ujjayi pranayam. You can close your larynx very relaxedly, try to breathe in. The <coughs> little cough is entirely normal. Cough comes from the area where you are trying to close. Very nice way to look at your accessory muscles. It is so relaxing that your accessory muscle of respiration doesn't work. If you're doing it in a tight way, except mm. you'll see your accessory muscles in there. Ujjayi, Brahmri Pranayam, Bumblebee, which you already have done. Close your five senses and do a sound. Uh, your uh, Chakra Awakening Pranayama, very important. Let's do a little concept of meditation. So Vata will need a focusing and focusing on your breath, but that also Pitta. It is called your cable Kumbhoka. We'll focus our breath and guide our breath up to the lower part and breathing out and guide our prana to come in. So let's do focus meditation, cable Kumbhoka for Vata and Pitta. Sit down comfortably. You can sit down with the Sukhasan or you can do your uh, uh, Ardha Padmasan, Padmasan, whatever is comfortable, you know. I'm showing it to you all the steps. Ardha Padmasan is good. Hand with Hanumudra. Visualize your breath. Visualize your breath coming it through your nostril. Visualize your breath coming in through your nose. Nose is a personal air conditioner, cleaning the air, warming up, cooling it down. It is guiding from the turbinate, releasing nitric oxide, going towards upper part behind the throat, upper part of the lung, middle part of the lung, lower part of the lung comes to the level of belly button. At the level of belly button, you stop. Hold your breath for a while. Kumbhoka. Puroka is breath inhalation. Kumbhoka, breath holding. Rechoka, breathing out. Visualize breath is coming out from the lower part of your belly button. Middle part of the lung upper part of the lung, behind your throat, coming out through your nostril. Prana resides outside your nostril. Prana is like a life force. Prana is like an a, invisible energy, non-measurable energy. Keeps us awake, alert, and alive. Visualize, breath is picking up prana. Prana is like electricity. Breath is like an electric cable. In our yogic tradition, our whole body does breathing, not only lung, our skin breathes, liver breathes, kidney breathes, muscle breathes, every organ breathes. It's pranic healing. 
Visualize breath is bringing the prana through your nostril. Now visualize the prana is going to the organ of healing. For my, I need my heart to have a healing. I'm visualizing prana is coming to my heart. It's called pranic healing. If you have any back pain, you visualize prana is coming to your back. That's a back healing your back, coming to your hip joint, coming to your knee joint. When you visualize all the breathing, a cooling, comforting, nice way of breathing is your doing little abdominal breathing, like breathing like a baby. Meditation is not sitting down, closing your eyes, paying attention to your breath. Meditation is preparing your physical body. Preparing your physical body is called sthiram sukham asanam. Stillness, happiness, and asana is a grounding pose. Breath is completely effortless, breathing out longer than breathing in. It is so slow, so subtle, we don't even know. That time your mind quiets down. What is meditation? Meditation is our mind has a thought process. We generate the thought process. We generate thousands and thousands of thought processes. 30, 40,000 thought process in a day. But most of our thought processes are in the past. Most of the thought process is in future. Very thought process in the present. We call past is a history. Future is a mystery. We call it a present. It's a gift. Take it. Out of all the thoughts in the present, 95, 98% are repeat thought process. I have to come, I have to be here, I have to teach a class, you know, after that I'm going to make a phone call, I have to read a book, I have to read this chapter, I have to go to the scene. Continuously chattering my mind. Chitta vritti nirog. In a meditation you enter in between the thought process. We increase the gap slowly and slowly. You still have the thought process, but don't have any repeat thought process. You get some saliva in your mouth, like what I'm having now. Parasympathetic activation. Slowly and slowly, if you can continue a meditation for a few minutes, it lasts throughout the whole day. But you cannot just sit down and keep doing meditation. Meditation, you need to prepare your body and mind, body and breath. So always do a physical practice. One of our biggest yogic of our time, Sri Aurobindo, wrote the book, Synthesis of Yoga. Always said, you know, unless you prepare your physical body, prepare your breath, Breath is a connector between a body and mind. If the mind is a kite, if the body is the, your, uh, the roller, the thread connecting the roller and the kite is your breath. Very important concept. Once you know this meditative concept, you can do it. Focus, you can do mantra. So they say the, the Brahmri Pranayam is one. Another mantra is Aum. Aum has a three component. A, U, Ma, A, U, M. A comes from the lower part of the lung. U comes from the middle part of the lung. Ma comes from the upper part of the lung. We'll finish with a one. Aum Pranayam at the end. You'll see the focus. And then also we'll do a little bit of a called meditative alternate nostril breathing when you finish. For kapha, you need your active, like activating. If you let the kapha do it, kapha won't be able to do it. So kapha will need, say, say, walking meditation. Walking meditation, when you walk, kapha will pay attention to the walking. Or kapha will be called a jyoti tratat. Tratat, like if you can look, you can look into, you know, your thumb and slowly, or if you look at the index finger and slowly bring it close to you, and do your eye movement called tratat, or you can do, actually, you can call it jyoti tratat, 
You can have a flame and look at it. I've shown it to you on my uh, Dinocharya, daily practice. Or, or what you can do is call your uh, Kati Chakra Asan, you know, the, the West rotation pose, you know. See, also when you get up, when you're sitting down, and you can get up very easily without support. Very, very important practice. Kati Chakra Asan is called a moving meditation. It's for people with the Kapha. You separate your words, Kati Chakra, I mean, Kati means West Chakra. You put your hand in the front, do it your breathing. Hmm? So you breathe out first, take a deep breath in, and breathe out, slowly move your body all the way to the back. Hmm? And same breathing cycle, you come back in the middle. Then you breathe in in the middle, go all the way to the back with the breathing out. And you slowly come back in the middle. Then what you can do, you can close your eyes and follow your breath and do this movement, Kati Chakra Asana. If you're doing with me, you'll feel the effect of it. This is called a moving meditation. This is for Kapha people, moving meditation. You will see this, it is so meditative practice. You know, it's a part of like a Tai Chi in China. So all the people in the morning, they'll get up doing this. Close their eyes, follow their breath, follow their body movement. moving meditation. Wonderful practice. Hmm? Let's finish. We'll do in a three sequence, sequence uh, a, a, a pranayama practice. First we'll do a alternate nostril breathing without closing our nostril. Then we'll do a yeah, one, one long Om Pranayam, then we'll have a moment of silence, you'll see. What happened in a meditation, what we'll learn meditation is basically seventh limb of Ashtanga Yoga. Yam, Niyam, Asan, Pranayam, Pratahar, Dharan, Dhan. Dhan is the seventh limb. After that you enter into a Samadhi, which is a union of your body, mind and spirit. So when you control your five senses, Pratahara, Controlling your five senses, you're entering into meditation. And one way to control your five senses is a silence. So let's use the Dhanu Mudra, Dhanu Mudra, put it over your knees. Close your eyes. Bring your awareness to your breath. Visualize the breathing out through your left nostril. Visualize your breathing through your left nostril in. Visualize your breathing out through your right nostril. Visualize your breathing in through your right nostril. Breathing out through your left nostril. I can clearly see I'm breathing through my left nostril, breathing out through the right nostril. Initially, maybe impossible, but with the practice, quite a good mind. Let's do it a few times. Then I'll give you a sign for your own pranayam. Then we'll do a silence before we finish.
generally we do three om pranayam let's do three om pranayam we do for body mind and spirit hmm? we'll do three component om has the a o ma and we'll be doing longer exhalation so breathe out first take a deep breath in uh Enter into a silence for a few moments to quiet down your five senses. Your eyes are closed, you are in silence. Slowly bring your hands in front of your heart. Touch your little finger and thumb. Separate your ring finger, middle finger, and index finger. Padma Mudra, Lotus Mudra, connects your body, mind, and spirit. Bring it close to your heart. Heart is the site of your soul. You develop introspection, practice of yoga, especially Ayurvedic yoga therapy with the art of self-healing. Start looking inside you and finally you find out, I am the cause and I'm the cure for all the disease I have. It gives me a physical wellness, mental wellness, spiritual wellness. Spiritual wellness, Atma Vidya, spirituality, believing in a power and surrendering gives me all the healing. Slowly put your hands in front, in front of your heart chakra, your thymus gland, and then bow your head down, called Namaste. It says, I'm honored the divinity within you. You are divine. Finally finish with the and that palming and cupping. Keep rubbing your hands, keep rubbing your hands. When you feel the warmth in your hand, remove your glasses, put it over your eyes, let the eyes take all the heat from your hand. Massage your forehead. Massage your ear lobe. Massage your auricle. Massage behind your ear, your tragus face. Then in the neck, the carotid sinuses in the front and the back. And it's a wonderful experience. Thank you for staying with us almost two hours for this Ayurvedic yoga therapy. And yoga therapy is called the art of transformation. Hmm? We transform. We transform. What we transform, we'll talk about it. 
maybe the next session we'll do yoga therapy, the art of transformation. A lot of people ask a question about diet, yogic diet. I talked about in my last session for the GI disorder in the diet. In yoga and Ayurveda says it's not the food. You know, in a Western term, it said we are what we eat. Yoga and Ayurveda says we are what we digest. Food doesn't matter because people in different parts of the world is different kinds of food. The food needs to be digested. Digestion is called parasympathetic. Parasympathetic word is called come and digest. You activate your parasympathetic tone. You convert your food into seven tissues called saptodhatu. Then you make a substance called ojas. Ojas is your immunity. That's your health. That's your immunity coming from inside. Immunity doesn't come from outside. When your food doesn't get properly digested, like in a Western concept, it's a calorie, you burn. If you burn, if you create a sympathetic, food doesn't get digested. Then the intoxicity of the food called ama, this ama shows up in your blood as a high cholesterol, high fat, high sugar, high uric acid. Once you have a parasympathetic activation, that is your yogic digestion. Thank you again. We'll talk about it, about food digestion one day. Thank you for joining us. See you again on next Saturday. Yoga therapy, the art of transformation.